What's going on, Paisano? Z here. Come on, you guys. Well, with another market watch today. I'm a little bit tired because yesterday I went X1, earning 7th place out of more than 350 players in the Emoto Extravaganza. I'm going to be having my Shadow deck profile coming up on the channel later on. And if you guys want to check out er, check out that deck profile, go ahead and check me out on twitch.tv forward slash YGO underscore Paisano. That is a lot to say. Comment question of the day. What deck are you playing right now and why? Let me know. As you guys know, Shadows, well, obviously, is one of my favorite decks of all time. But besides that, it's the deck right now in the meta that doesn't necessarily have a bad matchup. You can focus on a lot of decks in this game and say, good matchups, bad matchups. Shadows just doesn't have that. They don't have amazing matchups, but they really don't have terrible matchups. And I like that. It's the deck that rewards you the better you play. You make a mistake, you get punished immediately, and you will definitely know it. Shadows is obviously, to me, one of the most skill-based decks in the game right now. Now, Paisanos, I'll tell you right now, guys, like, this is a deck that's not cheap. In fact, once again, I'll have my profile later on the channel. I'll show you, it does cost a good amount of money for this deck. Can you make a budget version? Oh, absolutely. In fact, not only can you make a budget version, um, you can actually still top with that cheap budget version still. It doesn't really matter. You just gotta change cards out. You might have to modify things, but ultimately, you can do it. By the way, guys, new channel, please make sure to hit the subscribe button, like button, and once again, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. So, looking at the market and evaluating, we're going to evaluate a lot of cards that were in the meta decks used this past weekend, as well as other cards that just have general interest, and we'll talk about that in a second. But looking at Shadows in general, Shadows Schism, until we get the reprint being confirmed, Ultra Rad Advisor Duels with a $13 market price is upwards as far as $35. Now, most Shadow variants only use one of these. I think there's a couple of ones that use two. I personally think one's more than enough, um, but that's really the price you're going to need to pay for this Ultra Rare, unfortunately. Hopefully, we do get a reprint. If you're looking for max rare Shadows, like El Shadow Contra Ultimate Rare out of those Alliance with a $78 market price, the unlimited version is roughly around $91. And if you want a first shooting version of Contra Ultimate Rare, you're looking to pay upwards as high as $135 a copy for Ultimate Rare El Shadow Construct. Now, there's a bunch of other Shadow cards and they're all money. We talked about Noi, uh, Shakanaga when it was like $26. Market price still showing to be $20. Unlimited's being $40. First Edition's being $43. We talked about this card already and how it's still going to maintain a crazy high price point. It's, I don't think this card's ever going to tank. Uh, Noi Talos is a card roughly around $10. It has a common reprinting, but original print secret rare, not bad for $10. And then we have other Shadow cards like Rush It All Wendy, came in a structure deck. That card's $3. The Shadows of the Hollow Shadow Fusion, that one's $4. Ultra Rare Construct from those Lions is six, okay? Um, and then there's a bunch of other Shadow cards. The Battle of Legends Shadow Squamaz is being roughly almost near $3. The Super Rare Astro Pack 6 Shadow Beast, the one I personally use and like, that version is roughly around $7, and it just goes on and on and on. Shadows are slowly becoming more and more money, and the Structure Deck uh, is getting harder and harder to find. The Structure Deck, at which point, costs $10, costs way more than that now. Up next, guys, Invocation. So, if you guys don't know, uh, what I've been playing on stream on Twitch this past week, well, almost two weeks, has been Shadow Invoked. And Invocation is a card that you need. Two up. Now, you can get the cheapest version of the card coming out of Shots of Valhalla. Um, 19 listings, $38 market price. The value is still roughly around with $38. But if you want the highest rarity Invocation out of OTS on Pack 6 Ultimate Rare with $117 market price, the value is going to be... Well, I think this one's foreign, right? Is this one in another language? Yeah, okay, that one's foreign. Um, it's up to you if you want to get a foreign one or not. But if you want a regular one, you're looking to pay roughly around $190 for an ultimate invocation. Now, if you say, V, I just want to go in the middle, I just want to grab a secret rare. You got Fusion and Force secret rares, you got Bowser Legends. They're still roughly around 40 bucks and a little bit higher than that, like $41, $42 for the secret versions of invocation. Nevertheless, you're going to need two of these. Now, Prank Kids was another deck that kind of caught everybody off guard. Not me particularly, but a lot of players definitely got caught off guard. And I guarantee you, ask anybody that played Prank Kids this weekend, the number one thing they're going to say is, people kept asking, what do my cards do? This is the, the worst deck in the game to not know what it does. I always say, respect a rogue deck. It's a very important. In fact, in fact, I just generally say, respect my deck in general. Because a deck like Prank Kids, the longer it takes for you to read the cards, the more higher of a chance you're going to go into time. And if you go into time against Prank Kids and you don't know it, you lose. The game's over. If they get a main phase and time's calling the round, they're not going to end with a draw. No, no, no. They're going to put the differential between your life points and their life points by roughly around 1,500. That is insane. 
So once again, you don't know what this deck does? No big deal. Learn it. Just like we saw Dragon Link not become one of the most dominant decks in this extravaganza, but yet ironically was dominant in the past big Yu-Gi-Oh event, it's kind of crazy to see that they're just almost not here. You got one Dragon Link making top 16, and then you got three prank kits. Well, why is that? Well, easy. One, not everybody knew the old Dragon Link and exactly what it wanted to do. Not everyone did. So in this extravaganza, everybody responded. And then you got the same situation happening with prank kits. Not everybody knew what prank kits did, but they learned what they did. So now everyone's going, oh, well, that's a thing. Listen, I don't think you necessarily need to go out and buy this deck. This deck's really hard to play. It's not easy. Uh, the, the, the beginning is easy, but the longer the game state goes, if you're not experienced, it's gonna, you're just going to get your board broken. It's a really fun deck. I've been playing this deck forever. I've played this deck with Scratch Records where I have full power. I love Prank Kids. It's a great deck. But once again, for everybody out there that's watching, listen, the reason I don't think this is my the deck I would choose to pick is because if you don't open up a follow-up play and you get Ash, you're probably going to be ending your turn and getting blown up the following turn. Specifically, by Shadows, which is just go Shadow Fusion. Thanks for that Link 1 you put on board for some ungodly reason. I don't think I don't think Prank is, is a terrible deck. I don't think it's the best deck. I definitely think it's a deck that needs to be respected. And in this event, it was not. Do not buy Prank Kids if you think you're gonna buy a deck that you're gonna win with. It doesn't. It's not that simple. It's not that easy. I'm just telling you right now. For anyone wondering about the prices, though, Prank Kids price with only 19 listings with a $20 market price is still roughly around well. $23, you're gonna need about two to three of these. I, I, you know, if you wanted the exact numbers, uh, prank kids do to do. I would say to get three of these, car with $16 market price is roughly around $17 to $18. That's insane, being the fact that this car used to be like two to three. Battle Butler being roughly around three, and the other prank kid monsters are a dollar and up, dropsies being two dollars. Uh, listen, once again. I'm not here to crap on prank kids. Those three, you know, those three players I played this past weekend obviously did amazing with prank kids. Uh, a lot of people guarantee were reading their cards and not wondering when to play the right card at the right time. And that's when prank kids take immediate advantage. By your lack of knowledge, they will win those games. If you don't know what you're playing, but you're playing a meta deck yourself, you're already at a disadvantage against a deck like prank kids, which are going to capitalize on your inexperience of the deck. And if you're still reading the deck and we're in game three, time in the round. <laughs> You lose. So once again, I everybody out there watching this video right now, please, if you don't know what prank kids do, learn prank kids. If not, we're gonna have another extravaganza, and prank kids are gonna be dominant. Everything they're, they're gonna be the best deck in the meta. Don't get me wrong; they really are one, of the, at least one of the best. Definitely tier one in the meta, but they are beatable if you know what to do, when to do it. That is the trick with prank kids. The minute everybody learns that, we might see another dragon link situation in which never, the next remote extravaganza only shows maybe, maybe one prank kid deck, like we saw with dragon links this meta. Then we have Potter Desires, a card used as a three off in prank kids. Potter Desires with an $86 market price, it's not that. It's roughly around $95. Now, Potter Desires, in my opinion, is going to continue to go higher. Potter Prosperity, probably go lower. We can argue whether one's good and one's not all day long. The fact is, the Zayas saw play in those prank kid decks. People are, with, even though I just what I just said, they're gonna play those prank kid decks, and they're gonna think they're gonna win with prank kids. And maybe some might, well, some might win actually. Good, you know, good luck. But the Zayas is definitely one of the cards that's being used, other than prosperity. Once again, I, I, I always say this, Prosperity is a very unique card in which if you Prosperity, you better not want to go into mid-game. Desires, you don't care if you go into mid-game. This card with a $95 price point, by the way, it's going to be hard to replenish in the market due to the fact that who has Ultimate Rare Desires just lying around that they want to unload at an OTS point on pack 11 Ultimate Rare. Once again, people are going to be buying this, the price will be rising, and maybe if the price ever does go down, we have a meta in which Desires doesn't see play, it might not go down back to $86. The price of this card is going to continue to climb up higher. Then we have Royal Decree. So I didn't run this card. I actually talked to somebody throughout the, uh, as the during the event about Royal Decree. And I love this. I love the idea of this. Of this. Elric was one of the dominant decks this past weekend. And if you just played Royal Decree, unless they had the answer, they lose all their traps that fast. And I really like that. I think that's really fun. Mean? Yes. Horrible? Probably. If you're an Elric player, you're gritting your teeth? Yeah, I see you doing it. And I get it. But this card, not bad. And someone's going to say, oh, V, you can obviously use Golden Lord, pitch Golden Lord, and you'll get rid of the problem. I guess so. But that means you have to have Golden Lord in hand, meaning you have to have Curse Ellen on board, meaning with Curse Ellen, you have to add Golden Lord, which some Elec players do, some don't, especially if they have the Elec uh, trap, thinking they're going to be able to bring out Golden Lord in a turn, Elixir. 
Looking at Royal Decree though, every version is kind of crazy that's like relatively high in value. Obviously the TP4 Ultra Bears of Royal Decree are insanely high. With a $336 market price, the value is roughly around, well, about $400. Now, that's for the hardest to get version of Royal Decree. Okay, okay, no big deal. Torn Pack 6 Royal Decree with a $37 market price. The value, well, it's just about bought out. There's one over here, and it has it's roughly around $80, and that's it for the TP6 version of Royal Decree. Now, if you want to get the Hobby Leagues, well, you can't really play this unless you're playing gold format. You're not allowed to play this, and if anyone knows why, it's because these are old upper deck cards, and the thickness of this card was thicker, so you can't play in section Yu-Gi-Oh. Some locals might let you do it. Someone's got to comment down below. V, my locals let me do it. They are so good to me. Great. Konami Station Events, you're playing this, you will get in trouble, and you have to immediately replace this card with another version of the card that is not a Hobby League. Just throwing it out there, calling it what it is. $10 market price, the value... Being roughly around nine bucks. Okay. By the way, awesome card for a goat format. Then we have Dark Beginning. No problem. That one sold out. $35. The market price? $5. You want to keep going? This is, I mean, we can do it all day long. And listen, if you want a cheap version of Royal Decree, no big deal. You get a Secret Force, a super rare, 37, 37 cents. Uh, unlimited versions are less than a dollar. Same with first edition versions. They're dirt cheap. You can buy these versions. Once again, if everyone's playing Elric at your locals, you just flip the decree. If they don't have Golden Lord in hand, they're in a more trouble. And if they do have Golden Lord in hand, you flip, your, you flip another decree? Because, hey, if that player goes, what if I have Golden Lord? Okay, I'll have a second decree then. If we're just making things up, then let me just add a second decree in my sideboard. What I'm trying to say is, this card's really, really, really good, and unless your opponent's prepared for it, they will lose to it. And that's something that's kind of really interesting, because we saw Elec dominant because everybody was focused on Dragon Link, and we know people, people saw Elec as a good deck, definitely a good deck. I would agree, I would think a tier one deck. People didn't really know how to prepare for it properly. And I have another card that's really good against Elec moving forward in this market watch. Uh, real quickly, guys, Show Protective Talents, obviously one of the best cards in the game. You have two options. You... Put Dragoon in your deck and you make a Dragoon. So Dragoon's costing you about 75 for Dragoon. And a condo will low ball at 30 bucks. That's a hundred dollars. No big deal. And you bring Dragoon out. Cool. Or you lose the Dragoon by opponent activating Triple Tactics Talents and killing you with it. Something I did this past weekend. Triple Tactics Talents is a phenomenal card and a lot of players are using it. Obviously. We see Dragon of the Links players use it. We see a lot of players put it in its side. And also we see uh, some even prank kids players use Triple Tactics Talents. It just allows you to replenish your, your hand or take cards your hand or the other effect which makes you kill your, your opponent with your own Dragoon. Look at the secret version of the card at the Rise of the Duelist with $160. Almost the $117 market price. The value... It's about 114 it's on sale not 115 and then it's 118 dollars it's insanely insanely expensive and and listen starlight rare maybe it's not looking that bad right now being the fact that a starlight rare is roughly around 490. listen it's 490 but starlight rare will maintain price point the secret rare of getting a reprint would more than likely lower of course one of the, my favorite cards this weekend is evenly match a card which i don't think a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players used evenly match is phenomenal and nobody's playing because everyone wants to play like lightning storms you're playing super committed Yu-Gi-Oh. you want to use the lightning storms well easy match is better think about it if elec was one of the most dominant decks in the meta imagine all those players that, they pl that played against elec had evenly match the minute your opponent sets four sets five whatever it is and passes turn you evenly them they're keeping one card they're losing resources, which means they're losing advantage, which means by by definition, if you could put even two, one or two cards on board after after that in your main phase two, you're gaining it immediately. Now, looking at Evenly Match, uh, there's different versions. You can get the Ultra Rare out of Dual Power. It's not many, by the way. $26 market price. The value is already up to $30. Uh, if you want the original print Secret Rare out of Circuit Break uh, with 18 listings, so a $29 market price, the Unlimits of 41s. Um, and 44s, and after that 44 is gone, by the way, it goes to 53 single print listings. Uh, that was a copy of Evenly Match. And if you're like, V, I want Secret Rare, but not so Secret Rare, the Megan version Evenly Match, only 12 listings with a $30 market price. Well, it's roughly around $40 for Evenly Match. Everyone's kind of figuring this out as time goes on. And listen, if you're saying, V, I don't want to buy Evenly Match, uh, in Triple Tax Talents, way too expensive. Maybe you got in early and you got yourself a, a place set of Ice Dragon Prisons when they were $6. A great card against, once again, a slower meta. Good against Eldest, good against my Shadow Babies, good against all these kind of decks because you're basically going, give me that monster, lose your monster. Pretty good change, exchange for a card like that's, you know, Ice Dragon Prison. With a $50 market price, the value of Ice Dragon Prisons is, okay, that's Japanese. I hate how I have to like, go through and see like this. Like, what? Nobody's, who's spending 40 bucks on Japanese cards? Like, and, and why? Welcome to America, we can't play you. Um, looking at the, um, 
looking at this version, it's roughly around $60 a copy. $60 a copy. Fresh Dragon Prisons. The card price just skyrocket. Just, oh my god. Um, but if you have a playset that you pay 6 bucks for, put it to work. It's good. Like I said earlier about Process Rarity, I don't think this is a bad card, but if you can't clear your opponent immediately and you're playing it, that's a bad. <laughs> Looking at Process Prosperity at a Blazing Vortex with a, almost a $100 market price, the value of the card is roughly around $95. I will say, though, after that $95 place has gone, the next verifiable seller has a roughly around $100 a cop. So it's not tanked in the market. Yet. I feel like as the meta gets slower, this card gets worse. Like I said before, I'll say it again in case anyone didn't hear me. So in the comments results well, down below, will say, V, I don't care what you're saying. That's totally fine. Facts are facts, though. This card will go lower in value. Whether it's lower through a reprint, whether it's lower in, as we enter a slower meta, in which this card is not good as you enter into uh, um, turn 3, 4, and 5. You figure it out. This card's only good if you're like, all right, I need a good hand, and I need to murder my opponent immediately. That's literally what this card is for. And I like this card a lot, don't get me wrong, but it's very unique in that aspect. And people are looking at this card and thinking it's something that's like, oh yeah, I could just excavate six. Sure, what's the cost though? You're gonna wanna pay that. Don't get me wrong, I think people who banish three are the most smartest people around playing Prosperity. I just still don't agree with this card unless you can kill. And I hate saying it over and over again, it's not like a broken record. Maybe my point, my opinion will change, but until that opinion changes, that's the way I see this card. Underworld Gods of the Closed World with a $28 market price is roughly around $29. Alright, so I thought this card was going to tank, I'll be honest with you. And I think I'm wrong on this. Underworld Gods of the Closed World, well, despite the fact that it's seen almost no play, has one thing I forgot and I really didn't realize until the minute I looked at the card closely. Like, I actually grabbed the artwork and just popped it up and expanded it. It has an anime girl. <laughs> I doubted the power of a waifu, almost playable, not really playable, but almost playable, Link Monster in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. How dare I? Under, underworld, uh, underworld Gods of the Closed World, obviously this card that may one day see play. That day's not today, not happening. This past weekend, get it out of here. But Underworld Gods Closed World is an anime girl. It's probably not gonna tank. Maybe we'll get a reprint, we don't know. Maybe we'll get a reprint in Megatons, hopefully. But then again, the power of the waifu tax is strong. Uh, just throwing it out there, maybe we'll see one day this card I actually do see play. I mean, that IP Masquerina play is kind of cute. With a cute anime girl card that someone will say, not me, by the way. I'm just saying, I, I, as much as this card is really cool, the effect's really cool, the fact that it's a Link 5 and not a Link 4 is a big deal. So big that we just didn't see any play of this card. War Rock. So, listen, let me talk to you about something I just recently did a couple of days ago, and now I'm going to share with you guys. I was going to do a Mark Watch that, and I'm not doing it uh, because I blacked out. Okay. War Rocks. This deck core is dirt cheap, but it's getting support. Imagine, okay, you're there playing Black Wings. Think of a deck core you like that has no support, and you're really upset about it. Black Wings, Crystal Beast, just shot going out there into the sky. And imagine Konami goes, oh, by the way, new core set, we're having support. Would we agree the prices of those cards would rise? You have to be insane not to agree. War Rock came out of Blazing Vortex. The price of the most expensive car in War Rock is War Rock Mountain. This car with a $4 market price, well, are we going to include shipping? Because that makes it $5 for a secret rare out of Blazing Vortex. Now, this car is $5. The Warrock Core, no lie, is like less than $20. What are you doing with that information? Guaranteed gain support. I did this weekend, and I took that into consideration, and I bought a place at every single Warrock card. Three of every Warrock card. You're lucky I'm making this video, because no lie, I'm getting like another, I think I'm getting almost say, a $500 TCD player, and I'm debating on buying multiple cores. Because even if this doesn't do anything, the hype alone in future sets would spike the price of this car, of this uh, deck core. I'm just throwing out there for everybody, Warrocks, I don't know if they're good. I don't even know what they do. I don't care what they do. They're a deck core in which a secret rate is $5, and it's getting support. Say no more. And before you go, V, that's so dumb, that would never happen. Cool. Ask every Spiral player about that. They'll tell you it could damn well happen. In fact, there's a lot of other players that will be able to tell you, oh, yeah, a little support makes our deck spike in value. At the very least, let alone see meta play. Listen, storing out there, this deck at court is insanely cheap, and nobody's looking at it right now. I'm going to make fun of it. I, I get it. It was hyped up. Konami's really good at doing that and really good at disappointing us. But looking at War Rocks, I do think there's definitely a chance of possibility of it seeing play. And then worse than worse, you lost 20 bucks and you have a deck core that can have potential value in the future. So what I just said about War Rock, uh, Control C, go over here, Control V. I'm paste, you guys are Mac users, by the way. I'm copying and pasting. Um, 
S Force. S Force uh, rapper is five dollars. Okay, two secret rare. Oh, that's all. Okay, cool. S Force Bridgehead, the no secret rare out of Blazing Vortex, three dollars. Ultra rare uh, Platina, as well as uh, Justify and Gravitino. Cool. I don't know why I have other cards in here. Um, those bad boys are dirt cheap, under a dollar each. So once again, what are you doing? Oh, by the way, a little fun fact. Also getting support in the next set. Just throwing it out there. Sure. I bought two of these. I bought a deck. I bought this deck core. I bought War Rocks. And I'm telling you right now, it's dirt cheap. Nobody's looking at it right now. Everyone's just expecting it. Rightfully so. But it's getting support. And we don't know if that support can make it matter. We don't have. We have zero idea. Why not invest? So, up next, guys. Elich. Elich is one of my favorite decks in the game of Yuga. I really do like this deck a lot. But, oh, it's so expensive. And what annoys me is Ghost of the Past has supposed leaks. And if those supposed leaks are to become a reality, we see no Elish reprints in those. More importantly, we don't see Curse Ellen getting a reprint. That's a big deal. Curse Ellen, according to what you need three of if you're running El any Elic variant with a $41 market price, well, it's roughly around $40. And you need three of that. So that's $120. Bucks. No big deal. Uh, your Golden Lords, luckily, we do have a reprint of Golden Lords as a Gold Rare. Mm. Um, but if you want the secret rare version of Golden Lord with a $46 market price, you're in luck. They're $38. What a sale. Uh, I do think Golden Lord, even though I own a place of secret rares, like three of them, I do think the value of the secret rare will, will go down. Elixir of the Black Awakening is 21. You just need one of these. Uh, but really interesting, one thing that I really find fascinating is the fact that the Elixir traps are also worth money. Conquistador being the highest, being roughly around $5. Elixir being almost near $4. And Hakuero being roughly around almost near $3. For the Ella Traps, in which you need more than likely three of each of these. You can debate on playing two Aquedos, I don't blame you, but why not get three? It's 250 Why not? But I will say Elix is definitely a deck that I really do think is... If I had to say one deck that's a deck to beat for the next Yu-Gi-Oh event, it would more than likely be... <clears throat> it would more than likely be Elix. One of the favorite few decks in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh that is wanting to go in the mid-range, but can maintain it. Without doing a lot. If you're playing Shadows, you need Shadow Monsters to go in a graveyard to kind of recycle. With Elix, you just need your trap cards to go to a graveyard. That's it. That's that, that's we're done. That's it. Your trap cards go to a graveyard. You instantly have recycling. That's the end of the story. And that's something that's really unique about Elich. I think Elich is definitely the best kind of mid-range recycle deck. You can say, well, V, what about Dracos? I, yeah, sure. <laughs> But, like, a lot of decks beat Dracos, but, like, they are, like, the best, I think. Almost, almost the best all-time. It's between Dracos, in my opinion, and Burning Abyss. Comment down below. What do you think is the best deck that's, like, meta-wise that can consistently, like, you know, go, wrote, you know, can float really easily or go into resources without expanding a lot? I think Ellis is one of the best cards. You open Elland um, and the Elder Trap, you, you just open the sauce. Like, you open the spell, a three of, or any of the traps, like, you're just good to go. All right, up next, guys, Lightning Storms. So... This is one of the cards that I feel like is needed but not needed. Don't get me wrong. I think Lightning Storm is a phenomenal card. Obviously, if people re people resolve Lightning Storm this weekend and won because of it, Lightning Storm Secret Out Initial Sort with a $99 market price is roughly around $100 for Unlimited. And if you want a first edition version, no big deal. It's roughly around $122 for Lightning Storm. Now, if you want a Starlight Lightning Storm, just a little f a food for thought, there's a Spanish version for around 500 that's been there forever. As well as a not so Spanish version that's roughly around six hundred and fifteen dollars. That's a big difference. It's not like talents where the difference is like two or three fold. This is huge. The thing about lightning storms, and once again, I, I, I really want to reiterate this: is I always feel like every player is either running lightning storm or cosmic cyclone. And if you're running lightning storm, how many do you run? Do you run two lightning storm harvey feathers, or do you run three? I'm in the boat that I think you go run two lightning storms and a harpy Feather because you're ideally trying to do the same thing. It's really rare you want to get lightning storm to like blow your opponent's uh, board in his monster zone. Can you do it? Of course, and it's a luxury when you can. But I think two lightning storms and harpy Feather is definitely the best way to do it. And this might be leaning towards lightning storm slowing and slowing to slowly go down a value. Will it tank? Not if it gets a reprint. If it gets a reprint, it might not tank and hold that low price point for long. Look at Finn and Permits. Look at Evenly Match. Look at Ash Boss from Joy Spring. Tons of reprints. The original version tanked, stabilized, and slowly went up. And as everyone forgot them, they went boop, and it slowly went up. And then, and then one guy was like, "Yo, what the?" And they were like, "Too bad, I'm now seventy dollars again." Like that's how these cards went. Lightning Storm might be the same thing because it is on that crazy, sound like Dragon Ball Z here, but power level of a card. And I don't think it's a bad card. Once again, I think it's a phenomenal card. But if you're throwing a Lightning Storm to get to Elric player and you can't kill them, 
You can't kill them? You basically said, here, get value at the end phase. <laughs> Just don't bother me, for the love of God. Once again, I don't think this is a terrible card. I think we're still going to see a lot of play choose this card. And I do think, maybe I might consider using because it does have its merits. But it, I feel like other cards that if you're looking to play, you better have evenly matched because that is just a better card at getting rid of a lot of slow and mid-rangey decks. Langstrom's still great, don't get me wrong, but once again, you have to play in a certain way. Vanny's Ruler at a Cyber Dark Impact Ultimate Rare with a $48 market price. Unlimited versions are roughly around $50, by the way. A first version version is roughly around $60. This card went as high as a little over $100 for Vanny's Ruler Ultimate Rare at a Cyber Dark Impact. I sold my Dryton Core right before the ban list. And one of the cards I sold was my Ultimate Rare first version, Vanny's Ruler. I forgot what I sold it for, but it was way higher than this. Not to brag, I just, it is what it is. I just rebought an Ultimate Rare Vanny's Ruler first edition out of the set. Again, at a lower price point, because we know Drytrons are going to get support. Now, we don't know if it's going to make the meta. We have no idea. Some people were saying yes. Some people were saying we should wait. Some people were saying, uh, Drytrons, what does that do again? We don't, we have zero idea. But what I do think is what can go up in value is Vanny's Ruler. This card's a phenomenal card, and a play that gets a lot of decks in the meta, kind of just auto win. Like, it just kind of, like, if you go Vanny's Ruler against a lot of decks in the game right now, and they don't have the immediate answer being forbidden drop a Dark Rule no more, Regeki, Lightning Storm. Uh, they just kind of go, we'll go to game two. Like, that's what they do. So I think this card is really good. I think the best deck to abuse this card definitely will be Drytrons. And with the new support coming up, it might see play in that deck. If it does, we might see a lot of players immediately go to game two or adapt in which we see a meta in which players are playing like side deck cards in the main deck. Have not seen that. Well, we've seen that before. And I think we'll see something like that again. I think Vanity's Rule is definitely a card you might want to consider picking up. If you don't want to get the higher version, don't worry about it. It has a bunch of other rares, including an Ultra Rare, which is dirt cheap right now. But if you can't get your hands on the Ultima Rare, you might want to do it because it is not going to be this low for this long. Then we have Super Polymerization Ultima Rare at OTS Storm Pack 14. $107 market price. The value of this card is roughly almost near $120. It's currently at $118 for an Ultima Rare Super Polymerization. Now, once again, there are other versions. You don't have to get the highest rarity version. You can get it as low as like $2 for super polymerization. If you want my honest opinion as far as why I think Dragonlinks were not the most dominant deck, uh, deck of the meta and some of them in one Yu-Gi-Oh card, I would have to say super polymerization. This card is a blowout against Dragonlinks. It just punishes anybody also running any Dragoon package with Prairie Pet Verna Anaconda. If you're playing the new ch the Cheetah way to play Prairie Pet Verna Anaconda, uh, I mean, uh, to bring out Dragoon, you're basically telling your opponent, hey, these are two dark monsters, the you have super poly, because I, I just want to pay, I just paid those on light points, to give you a monster. Do you want to make the trade? And more than likely, your opponent's going to say, oh yeah, I'll be totally fine. I'll, yeah, let's do that. Super Polymerization is a phenomenal card. And against Dragonlings themselves, they obviously put two dark monsters on board. They put a lot of other things on board, but specifically, two dark monsters. This card's phenomenal at breaking boards, and if it's good at breaking boards, it's a good card in general in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Now, do I think this card is going to maintain its high price range for long? Probably not, and here's why. I think Ultimate Super Polarization, even though the fact that it's a phenomenal card in the meta, is very situational. Even though I'm personally playing three in the main deck, I think you should play three in the main deck. I don't feel like this Ultimate Rare version, specifically this Ultimate Rare version, should maintain a high price point as OTS Swamp Pack 14 is still relatively new. We know from past experience, even though it shows meta re relevancy, the reason why this card kind of spiked up recently is because of, well, a check slash bribe slash hush money the government literally just gave everybody in this country. But I do think this card is going to rise down in value, being the fact that it recently came out at an OTS one pack 14. Does that mean it's a bad card? No. Does that mean this card's not going to see meta play? No, this card's definitely going to see meta play. But it does mean this card's price is insanely high, insanely inflated, and more than likely will slowly start going down. Anyway, I really appreciate you guys watching my market watches. Thank you so much, guys. Listen, like I said, X1, if you guys have been watching my Twitch streams this whole past last week, I went X1 in every event I played. Um, the week before, I think I pretty much went X1 in every one of those events. Uh, I think minus like one or two. I went like the past two weeks X1. I just, I, I literally don't know why this deck does this. Um, <laughs> but at a eight, it was eight, yeah, eight rounds yesterday, I went X1. I played a one win a mat, went 3 0. So literally, I can clearly say this entire weekend, I went X1, which it all once again, enemy seventh place. Not gonna complain, just really curious why the universe has to joke around my deck like this. Pazanos, once again, if you guys want to watch me play Shadows Invoked, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be using the same exact list. Um, that I play, I might do a couple of card two changes today in my Twitch channel, YGO underscore Paisano. Links will be down below. And if you guys are interested in the deck profile, I'll be having it come up on this channel. Also, one quick thing I want to mention that's really, really, really important. 
Uh, so, I'm not sure if you guys uh, know this or not, but hold on one second. I'm not sure if you guys know this or not, um, but it's someone's birthday, and uh, he's probably surprised right now. And I've been talking to his girlfriend. Not, no, not in that way. Not, come on. Come on. Okay? Come on. Okay, won't do that camera. Not in that way. Uh, but she's been really adamant that I mentioned his birthday today. And I, I mentioned it one at a time, and I mentioned the guy's birthday, and I was really, and, and, and he showed me, a, his, his girlfriend showed me a picture of him reacting to it, and I really enjoyed that. I thought that was awesome. Nelson, happy birthday. Listen, real quickly, bro. Your girl Sabrina, uh, Sabrina pfft, bro, bro, she's good looking. Okay, once again, married. Okay, chat. Okay, everyone, comment down below. No, chill. She's good looking. She's madly in love with you. Like I literally said, he's a lucky man, and she goes, "I'm a lucky girl." Bro, what? I, I told my wife she's a lucky girl. She's gonna go. Nah. <laughs> uh, and you guys look adorable together. Nelson, seriously, man. Happy birthday, brother. I hope there's many more to come. My wife's birthday was the 26th. I'm so glad yours is the 29th. Great time for birthdays is always in the end of March. I don't know why. Just You always feel good about like the end of March. It's like I, I've, I've always enjoyed it. And I'm really glad that um, your girl reached out to me, Sabrina. Once again, thank you so much, Sabrina, for reminding me because my memory is really bad. And I'm, I'm, I, I just look at the pictures of Nelson. Uh, and Nelson, listen, man. Happy birthday. Treat her well. Put a ring on her finger as soon as possible. That's a damn good woman. That's a woman who's madly in love with you. Once again, I've been talking to her. She literally tells me she loves you a lot. Like crazy. Um, it's wild, everybody watching this video right now. Like, it's just wild. Like, like I just, I, I don't understand it. Gr these, uh, uh, Sabrina as well as, uh, I forgot the name of the other girl from the last time. I forgot her name. But they're so madly in love. They're going to the guy, they're going to my, me and going, can you please wish her happy birthday? He's a big fan of your channel. And I'm like, dude, my girl would never do this. And I've been with my girl since, God, man, my sentence is so far. I've been serving 20 years. But, like, this is amazing. This is awesome. Nelson, seriously, man, happy birthday to you, brother. I hope you enjoy. I hope you had a great birthday. Go on and have a great day. Take the mask off. <laughs> Risk it for a day. And put a ring on that girl's finger because she's mad. I'm, I'm telling you, Nelson, I'm telling you right now. I've never talked to a chick who's so madly in love with her man as Sabrina is with you, Nelson. So that's a big deal, and I really do um, appreciate you. Once again, Sabrina, um, 8.30 in the morning, uh, she reminded me about the birthday, and, and seriously, that's that's insane. <laughs> I, I I mean, I, I literally didn't sleep at all, so that's why I'm going to go black out, but, like, that's awesome. Uh, to everyone watching this video right now, that if you're, it's your birthday today, if you recently had a birthday, seriously, happy birthday to everybody. Uh, I always like I always feel weird about birthdays. I always feel like like as you get older you care about it less, but you appreciate that you're still around. And you know, we don't know how much time we have. We tomorrow, a month, a year. And you know, I tell everybody like I am thirty seven, but in Yu-Gi-Oh years I'm eighty four. <laughs> and I feel like everyone, you know, we don't know when the clock's gonna tick. But enjoy every single day with the people you love around you. And every single day will be the most rewarding day. Live it like it's your last. You never know if it can be. Anyway, Pazans, I really appreciate you guys watching my videos. This is your boy V. Nelson! <laughs> happy, happy birthday, brother. I'll see you around, Paisanos.